Charles Barkley decided to weigh in on the Zimmerman case. This is really interesting. Let's listen. Thoughts on the George Zimmerman verdict? Well, I uh, uh, agree with the verdict. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I feel sorry that young kid got killed, but they didn't have enough evidence to charge him. Uh, something clearly went wrong that night. Uh, clearly something went wrong, and I feel bad for anybody who loses a kid. Uh, but if you looked at the case and you don't make it, it, there was some racial profiling, no question about it. But something happened to change the dynamic of that night. And uh, I know, and that's probably not a popular opinion among most people, but just looking at the evidence, uh, I agree with the verdict. I just feel bad because I don't like when race gets out in the media because I don't think the media has a pure heart, as I call it. There are very few people who have a pure heart when it comes to race. Uh, racism is wrong in any shape, form. There are a lot of black people, people who are racist, too. I think sometimes when people talk about race, they act like only white people are racist. There are a lot of black people who are racist. And I don't like when it gets out there in the media, because I don't think the media has clean hands. I think you're right. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm yeah, glad you made that yeah, point. I don't think the media has clean hands. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I feel sorry that young kid got killed. But just judging by the evidence, I don't think that guy should have went to jail for the rest of his life. But something happened bad that night, obviously. Yeah. I like what one of the jurors said. They said they both should have walked away. Yes. Oh, Charles, man. Look at the false equivalency at the end where uh, Bartiromo goes, I, I love what uh, one of the jurors said. They both could have walked away. And Barkley's like, right. No, man. I hate the false equivalency. It's not like two people are equally wrong and two people were equally on trial for manslaughter and this is a situation that we say, ah, oh, a little bit right on this side, a little bit wrong on this side. No, 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 no. One person is a dead unarmed teenager carrying Skittles and iced tea minding his business. The other one is a man that hunted him down and killed him. I got to disagree with Charles on this one. Uh, he keeps repeatedly saying there wasn't enough evidence, there wasn't en enough evidence. Of course there was enough evidence. The problem is that the prosecution did a terrible job. And, uh, I mean, let's be honest. The defense has an easier job, and they did a better job. Look, all the defense had to do was just poke holes in the argument and raise what-if questions. Well, yeah, I know that that's what the facts say, but what if... It was Trayvon who started the fight. Mm. Right, so uh, one guy... By the way, Trayvon tried to run away at one part. That fact isn't nearly discussed uh, enough. Where he realized he was being stalked and he was scared, he ran, right? Uh, and then, so the guy who got out of his car was told to stand down by the police and followed anyway. Uh, yeah, that guy didn't start the fight. The one who was running away uh, somehow started the fight, somehow. Look, I don't want to go over, rehash all the specifics of the case. We've only done that a thousand times. But it's like Charles Barkley is making me. So an innocent black teenager, Skittles and iced tea, walking home, minding his business. He gets followed by a wannabe neighborhood watchman. An altercation breaks out and he gets killed. And there's not enough evidence to say he committed a crime? Absolutely he committed a crime. That, I mean, it's like the textbook definition of manslaughter. And uh, look, Charles says, you know, I really don't like race in the media. I don't think they have a pure heart or however he framed it. And uh, yeah, I agree. But only the people on the right. Uh, in fact, I think almost everybody who's talked about this on the left is being genuine and is being pure. Like, I've been talking about this case a lot. What, do I not believe the things that I'm saying? Of course I believe the things that I'm saying. And all the people on the left are saying in the media, whether it be MSNBC or... Uh, the different new media outlets online or us we're just saying hey look look at the reality somebody was minding his business walking home and he got killed okay that's a problem and he was openly profiled he was profiled they said oh there were other black people in the area that had robbed before so i guess this guy's guilty let me chase him down no we on the left we have a pure heart and pure intentions and we're being honest in our conversation and on the right i agree with charles on that on the right they're not on the right for whatever inexplicable reason, they, they've picked a side, a side I didn't even know existed, where they say, oh, no, uh, Zimmerman's a victim. A victim of what? A victim of what? I don't know what that means. A victim of what? Uh, he's the one that pulled the trigger and killed somebody. And they do hero worship of him. Like, Ann Coulter tweeted, hallelujah, when Zimmerman got off. What are you celebrating for, man? 
And uh, look, last point here. Th I mean, I'm surprised Barkley said this because this is like probably the top five worst false equivalency I've ever heard where he says, oh, yeah, no, a lot of people don't get it. Black people are racist, too. All right, let's have a conversation real quick. How does black racism affect the world? Um, seriously, try to answer it in your head, as I said. Uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, a, somebody who's black and racist, what that would lead to? That would be like them sitting in uh, their living room and saying, "Yeah, uh, those Chinese guys, <laughs> they suck," or whatever. Oh, those white guys, a like cracker, did this or that. Uh, how else does it affect the world? That's it. No, seriously, that's it. Now, how does white racism affect the world? Uh, slavery, Jim Crow, segregation, uh, a pay gap where black people make 83 cents to the white person's dollar for the same work, a study where you put a black name on a resume and a white name on a resume and everything else is the same, the white name gets picked significantly more often than the black name, a study where you go on eBay, you sell an iPod, a white hand does it and a black hand does it, price is exactly the same, the white hand gets all the hits, the black hand gets none. There was another uh, study that just popped up recently, ABC was talking about it a couple years ago, where it was like a black person uh, trying to unchain their bike and they couldn't do it, and then a white person would do the same thing, try to unchain their bike, and when it's the uh, black guy, everybody assumed he's stealing it. When it's the white guy, people ask uh, if he needs help unchaining, unchaining it. They don't ask if it's his bike or anything like that. Look. There aren't two realities, right? We didn't live in a United States of America where it was the white people who were slaves, where it was uh, the white people who were uh, the minority and oppressed, where the white people make 83 cents to the black person's dollar. That just didn't happen. That's not empirically correct. Those aren't the facts of reality. So let's not whitewash it as if reverse racism is as big of a problem as racism it's simply not. It's just not. And uh, it's a goddamn shame that uh, Charles Barkley is now saying these fallacious things that the right wing is now going to salivate over. Yes, we got a black person to say black people are racist. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Let's call it all even and say uh, it's 50-50. Trayvon and Zimmerman are both equally guilty, and uh, let's move on from here. No, that's not the reality, and I'm going to keep talking about it.